Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company accounting video. Um, as a reminder, this Excel spreadsheet along with blank forms is available on our website. The link is included in the description below. So if we take a look at some of the areas that we have here on our instruction sheet, we'll see that our first step is to journalize business transactions. Now these business transactions are going to be uh, included on the general journal. And you'll notice off to the sides that we don't have to scroll up and down as often um, as uh, we normally would need to. I did go ahead and put the chart of accounts as well as our pregnant LC that we discuss in the debit credit video. All right, so let's take a look at our first transaction. So we have Jonathan Tinker, our company owner, depositing $15,000 into a business checking account, and this company, company is gonna be called Fraud Company. All right, so now that we have the date, let's go ahead and analyze this business transaction. Now keep in mind that whenever you are doing these journal entries, you are always analyzing the transaction from the point of view of the business, not the owner. So when Jonathan is taking that $15,000 and investing it into his business, what is happening to the company's cash? The company's cash is increasing. The next question to ask yourself is what type of account is cash? And you know that cash is an asset. And since we know that this is an asset that is increasing, that lets us know that we should be debiting the cash account. So cash is our debit. Now keep in mind, if anything that I'm saying here doesn't seem to be making sense, you might want to go on to our main page and take a look at some of the accounting basics first. Um, you might want some practice with knowing the different accounts, account types, so on and so forth. All right, the, remember another important part about journal entries is that we always have to have at least one debit and at least one credit. So we are missing our credit account here. So when we take a look at this transaction, we see that the owner is making a contribution to his business. And what that is going to do is that's going to increase the owner's capital within that business. So Jonathan Tinker, comma capital, is increasing. Capital is a capital account. In order to increase a capital account, you credit. So there is our missing credit account. Keep it consistent, there we go. All right, our next one on January 3rd, purchased $1,000 of supplies on account. So they have some really good keywords in this transaction. So the first one is supplies. So we know that supplies are, are increasing because we're purchasing those supplies. Uh, what type of account is supplies? Supplies is an asset. So how do you make an asset increase? Debit. So supplies is our debit. Now, some people might ask, why are we debiting supplies and not supplies expense? And that is because supplies are an asset, a future economic benefit for the company until we use them. Uh, once these supplies are actually used up, then we'll go ahead and transfer that into supplies expense. But when you first initially purchase them, debit supplies. All right, now when you buy something, you can either pay for it now or pay for it later. In this case, we have another really good key phrase here on account. So this means that it's going to be accounts payable. And that's because we owe this money to the person that we are buying these supplies from. So let's analyze it even though we know it's going to be our credit. All right, so, so uh, accounts payable is a liability account. And the amount that we owe to the vendor who is selling us those supplies is going up. So how do we make a liability go up? Credit. So let's go ahead and credit that accounts payable account. All right. Next one. $4,000 of equipment was purchased. Uh, Jonathan paid $3,000 down and signed a note for the remainder. So in this case, you'll notice that we're getting $4,000 of equipment we're paying $3,000 cash, and the other $1,000 is going to be in a note payable. So let's start analyzing it piece by piece. Let's start with the equipment. All right, so do we have more equipment or less equipment? 
now that we're purchasing it. More, so equipment is increasing. What type of account is equipment? Equipment is an asset. So how do we make an asset increase? Debit. So we are going to be debiting the equipment account by 4,000. All right, next let's deal with this $3,000 down. When we say $3,000 down, what are we essentially giving up? Cash, right? So cash is decreasing since we're paying this cash. What type of account is cash? It's an asset. And how do we make an asset go down? Credit. Now notice here that we're only paying $3,000 cash. So there's this missing $1,000 on the credit side. And that's going to be for the note that he is signing. Notes payable since we owe that note. And again, if we want to analyze it, notes payable is increasing. It's a liability. Credit to make it go up. All right, we have another one here on the fourth. Paid, stop. So paid is one of the nice keywords where I'd say 99.999% of the time when you see the word paid, uh, always read the full transaction, but it's a pretty good chance that it's going to be cash is decreasing. So let's keep reading. Paid $1,500 for three months rent. He moved into the space the same day. So yep, so he paid cash. So cash is decreasing. What type of account is cash an asset? How do we make an asset decrease? Credit. So remember, debits come first, so I'm going to skip a line and credit cash for that $1,500. Okay. Now, what about for our debit? In this case, this $1,500 was for three months of rent. So we have two accounts here that are kind of similar to it. Uh, we have prepaid rent and we have rent expense. Since this is for more than a month, we're going to be debiting prepaid rent. If it was just for the current month, then we could expense it. Right. Received an advance payment of $2,000 from a client for services to be provided later in the month. All right, so received an advance payment. So what are we receiving? Cash. How do we make cash go up? Asset, increase, debit. Now, for our credit account, we have to decide um, what exactly is going on here. Why are we receiving this cash? And we are receiving this cash because it is an advance payment. So essentially, we owe a service. And the account that we use when we owe a service, unearned fees. And we can even analyze this a little bit further just to make sure we understand. All right, unearned fees is increasing because we owe more services now that we've received this advance payment. Unearned fees is a liability account, something we owe. How do we make a liability go up? Credit. And there's our missing credit. All right. January 12th. Paid $600 towards the office supplies that were purchased on January 3rd. Stop. Paid. Remember, paid. More, than, more often than not, really 99.99999% of the time, cash is decreasing. Cash is an asset. How do we make an asset go down? Credit. So we're going to be crediting cash. Now, as for our debit, why are we paying this cash? Well, we're paying $600 towards the office supplies that were purchased on January 3rd. So back on January 3rd, we debited supplies and credited accounts payable the balance of what we owe to these people. So here, when we're paying it off, we're going to be decreasing accounts payable. The balance of what we owe is going down. So accounts payable is a liability. How do we make it go down? Debit. All right, next one. The 15th, provided $10,000 of services on account. So since we provided these services um, on account, let's see, payment for these services should be received by the end of the month. Um, let's start with the provided services part first. So when we say we provided these services, um, 
that should indicate, that should trigger something in your head that says we have to record revenue. We provided those services. And the revenue account that this company uses is fees earned. So how do we make an income revenue account increase? Credit. So we know that fees earned is our credit. And notice that these services were provided on account. So we did not receive cash for them now, but we will receive cash for them later. So accounts receivable is increasing. It's an asset debit to make accounts receivable go up. All right, next, paid, stop. <laughs> Again, paid, cash is decreasing. So let's make cash go down by a credit. And what are we paying this cash for? A monthly business phone line, telephone expense. On the 20th, we hired a receptionist. He will earn $15 an hour and will begin working the following week. Um, all we did in this transaction is hire someone. Um, he didn't work for us yet. We don't owe anything to him yet. So essentially, uh, the 20th does not require a journal entry. The 21st, however, this one is going to require a journal entry. Receive $2,000 from customers on accounts. When we say receive $2,000, what are we receiving? Cash. What type of account is cash? An asset. Is cash going up or down? It's going up. Therefore, we have to debit cash. And now why are we receiving this cash? Well, we're receiving it from our customers that owe us that money. Remember, what is the account we use for when customers owe us? Accounts receivable. And when they pay off those accounts receivable, what does that do to the balance of what they owe? It decreases the balance of what they owe. So accounts receivable is decreasing. It's an asset. So we credit accounts receivable to show that their balance of what they owe us is going down now that they're paying it off. Here's another pretty easy one. Paid $400 for advertising. We're seeing paid. Okay, so we did pay cash. So cash is decreasing by 400. And what did we pay it for? Advertising. Beautiful. And then last one withdrew $1,000 for personal use. Now keep in mind that whenever we are doing these, we are journalizing from the perspective of the business. So what is happening to the business's cash when Jonathan removes money for personal use? Well, their cash is decreasing. And so looking at our chart of accounts, what do you think our debit would be? Jonathan Tinker Drawing. And before we wrap up, I do want to go over that Jonathan Tinker drawing a little bit more. Um, ask yourself, what type of account is the drawing account? And the drawing account is a contra capital account. So remember, with contra capitals or any type of contra account, uh, you're going to go to that line item and remember that it's going to flip. So capital normally would decrease with a debit, but a contra capital will increase with a debit. So to record that Jonathan is withdrawing funds and that balance of what he's withdrawing is increasing, we debit that drawing account to make it go up. All right, so now that we're done with step one of our accounting cycle, the next step is going to be to post to our general ledger. We'll go ahead and do that in the next video. So if you need to, go ahead and take a break. Make sure that you understand how each of these journal entries work, and I will see you in step two.